Hello folks, happy Wednesday evening. I appreciate you joining me. Um, I wanted to talk today about worthless, being worthless, worthless people. It sounds rough, uh, but it is a word that the, the scriptures refer to fairly often. And um, I just want to delve into it a little bit more. Um, now, I hope you don't find this sermon worthless, that's, that's for sure. I hope it is a blessing and an encouragement to you, and perhaps even a warning. Um, we know that the opposite of worthless would be the kingdom of God, because that is extremely valuable. It is, it is precious, and the Lord gives us several parables in the scripture to help us appreciate that. Uh, one of the, one that is very common is the uh, parable of the lost Bitcoin, uh, and a little play there. But actually, there was a, a situation, as I understand it, within the past couple of weeks where a fella owned uh, Bitcoin and a lot of it. In fact, it was valued at over a hundred million dollars, uh, which is easy to come by because Bitcoin has gone up so much. Well, he lost the 24 word passcode to access it. So he's doing everything he can. He's offering rewards to someone that could crack this code. He's checked all over for it, all over the house on everything he can because it's so valuable and he needs to find that. Well, of course, we know the kingdom of heaven is more valuable than Bitcoin, but the effort to pursue it should be even more intense than what this guy's going through. But that is something the kingdom of God is of value, of high value. But when the Lord talks about worthless, the Hebrew word actually comes from the same word as Belial, Belial, which is the word for the devil or Satan. And it's interesting that that word worthless ranks right up there. It helps you appreciate it's not a neutral word. It's not just like, oh, it's just worthless. It doesn't really mean good or bad. It's just worthless. No, worthless is bad. Worthless is right up there with wicked. And uh, it's something that, uh, that the Lord looks down upon. Now, I want to point out, first of all, that it is the Lord who decides who is worthless and who is not. He is the judge. We are not. In fact, in the book of Matthew, Matthew 5.22 uh, Jesus says that anyone who says you are good for nothing, worthless, or useless, will be guilty before the Supreme Court. Uh, and I don't think he means of America, but before his Supreme Court. But you get the idea that calling someone worthless is right up there with calling them a fool. That's for the Lord to decide, not for us. However, we can recognize worthless behavior, and there are examples in the scripture of who the Lord says is worthless. Now, um, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, 27, Proverbs 16, 27, it says that a worthless man digs up evil while his words are like a scorching fire. So you get the idea, one of these characteristics of someone that is worthless, is they are unforgiving. They are gonna go in a situation or with a person, they are gonna dig up evil. It's not that things are just coming before them and they're tossing them out in your face, trying to bring you down or remind you of how horrible you are. No, they work for it. They look and they research and they remember and they do what they can just to constantly bring this stuff before you. And when they do, it says it's like a scorching fire. It burns, it hurts. So you may recognize there may be some people in your life that do this. Um, and this would be a worthless type of behavior to continually do this kind of thing. And they're tough to hang around these folks because they're always bringing you down, always looking for the worst, always reminding you of how horrible you are. Uh, tough, tough group for sure. But there are some examples in the scripture where the Lord refers to men as being worthless. Not just their behavior, but he says they're worthless. Uh, in the book of 1 Samuel, uh, chapter 10, uh, verse 27, the Lord points out saying that the sons of Eli were worthless men and did not know the Lord. Uh, so these were the, the sons of Eli, the priest. They, <clears throat> they had a tremendous responsibility, uh, a glorious one at that, to be priests of the Lord, to take the sacrifice from the people to bring it before the Lord for atonement for their sins. What they were doing is they were taking the choicest of meat for themselves, 
those best meats were, be, were to be burned and sacrificed before the Lord, but they would take them and eat them. Um, this kind of behavior, neglecting the tremendous duty from the Lord, the Lord referred to them as worthless. Yet these were wicked, wicked men. Now, another example, in the book of Judges, uh, chapter 9, and in verse 4 particularly, it points this out. But it's the story of Abimelech, who was the son of Gideon. Um, after Gideon died, we had talked about the story before, Abimelech had decided to make himself king. And the scripture says that to help along with this, he went and he hired worthless men to come with him and to gather and support him. And these worthless men went and murdered all 70 of his brothers. But here are these men, basically a, a mob, uh, men with no particular focus or direction, but they're willing to do whatever they need to do to get paid. People that are worthless are sellouts. They've got no loyalty, uh, no commitment. They'll go where the money is. And boy, these, um, these people can be dangerous, um, especially if they're in places of, um, of government. Um, very dangerous when the people will sell out their own countrymen in order to benefit themselves. Um, but someone that is worthless has this character and it's, it's not good. Very, very dangerous in a church, in a government, in a family, in a spouse, anyone. Um, but, and we saw that with, uh, with these men that supported Abimelech. Um, in, uh, there's also, um, there's some other examples in the scripture, but those are the two that I wanted to point out. Now, obviously we don't want to be worthless, but are there things that we can pursue that are worthless, things that we have to be careful of? And of course they are. Obviously, things that are sinful, worthless, worthless to the purpose and kingdom of God, detrimental in fact. Um, also, um, in verse, uh, in chapter, I'm sorry, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 9, Paul points out, he says, Have you turned back to weak, worthless, elemental things? In other words, what he's saying is here, he's talking to these, uh, the church of Galatia. They've been influenced by these Judaizers. Christ has brought them a freedom all through his death on the cross. But yet the church of Galatia was compelled, and other churches did the same thing, to go back to these religious practices, honoring the feasts, circumcision, things like this. And Paul is referring to them as worthless. We know that the scripture says that our righteousness, our goodness, is filthy rags before the Lord. Now, folks, I could use rags all day long. I got lots of purposes for them. But a filthy rag, no good. There's nothing you could do with a filthy rag. Uh, it is worthless. And our righteousness is the same. Our religiosity, our rituals, our, um, and I know we don't have sacraments these days and circumcision, all those kind of things, but there are things, uh, routines that we could get into. Uh, maybe it's church attendance, maybe it's being on a board, maybe it's uh, certain things you do uh, involved in church or the community where we could kind of feel a bit sanctimonious. We feel that we've got it together based on that and not on what the Lord has done. And Paul says that that is worthless. It is worthless to the kingdom of God. Um, so we certainly do not want to pursue that or anything like it. Now, if you were in Sunday school class a uh, week before last, uh, Ann taught from the book of Jeremiah chapter 2, it was very, uh, very compelling when we hear the, the words of the Lord through Jeremiah um, and uh, how grieved he is at the people. Um, and you realize that, that you very well can be in that same boat. I know I feel like that, ways that I've turned from God and um, have, have taken his, uh, his word lightly. Um, but in Jeremiah chapter 2, 
verse 21. And I want to I want to read these, these few verses. <clears throat> Jeremiah 2, 21. Um, and the Lord is, is talking to Israel or to Judah. He says, yet I planted you a choice vine, holy of pure seed. How then have you turned degenerate and become a wild vine? So here again, uh, we see... The example that the Lord uses, I've given you a precious seed to turn into become a precious vine that produces fruit. Instead, you've turned into this wild, contorted, worthless vine. A vine that doesn't bear fruit, it's good for nothing. Um, <clears throat> so you can see that he's speaking to the people of Israel. Now, how did they get there? How did they become worthless? They started out with that seed, that precious seed that he put them as his people. But how did this happen? And in chapter, still in chapter 2, I'm going to read, um, uh, let me start with verse 1. It says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord, I remember the devotion of your youth, your love as a bride, how, how you followed me in the wilderness in a land not sown. Uh, verse 3, Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest, who ate of it incurred, all who ate of it incurred guilt, and disaster came upon them, declares the Lord. And here, uh, verse 4 here, uh, hear the word of the Lord, a house of Jacob, and all the clans of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, what wrong did your fathers find in me? In other words, talking about the fathers there, the um, who came before Israel. What wrong did your fathers find in me that they went far from me and went after worthless worthlessness and became worthless? They went after worthlessness and they became worthless. What determined whether these people had value, whether they were valuable to God and his kingdom, or they were worthless, was what they pursued. If we pursue things that are worthless, we become that. We, 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 we become worthless ourselves. So the things that we cherish, the things that we work at, the things that we desire are very important. And often in the scriptures, we, we see that it's not what the people pursue. Like in the case of Israel, for example, they desired safety. They were worried about invading forces coming in. And, and that's okay. It's fine to desire that. We, we want a degree of comfort and security and protection. Of course we do. But the problem was who they relied upon. Instead of replying, relying upon the Lord, they, in turning to him in repentance, they went to the Egyptians. They looked to foreign countries, uh, to other godless countries in, that, in, in many cases. So... <clears throat> It's what we pursue that counts. That will determine who we are. Um, and us as Christians, we've been given that precious seed, that precious salvation, that washing, that cleansing that enables us to even pursue God. And it's so important uh, to keep our hearts clean and pursue and desire the right things, things that are good, things that are of the Lord. We know that being in His Word reading it, studying it is, is so important. Gathering <clears throat> with people of like faith, encouraging one another, helping each other, putting others' needs before our own, uh, prayer, supplication, worship. These are all things that, that the Lord desires. And as we, as we stay close to Him, <clears throat> as, we, as we keep our minds focused on Him and don't turn away from Him, will pursue these things that are of value. <clears throat> I want to read one more uh, one more verse here. And it is in 1 Samuel 12, 21. 1 Samuel 12, 21. Now, 
Samuel was talking to the people, and this is around the time when, again, Israel had fallen into sin, and they desired a king. Um, and here Samuel is the word to them. He says, uh, and do not turn aside after worthless things that cannot profit or deliver, for they are empty. Um, but you can see it says, don't turn aside. We, when we get our focus on Christ, if we take our eyes and our focus off him, we start looking at things that are worthless. And that could draw us. Because these things that are worthless, um, they look good. Uh, they sound good. Uh, they can make us feel good. They can be, be more liked, more popular, uh, have more money, more things, more fame, all these things that the world can entice us with. But the world has nothing to offer. It is worthless. <laughs> uh, so we need to focus on, on the Lord and his goodness and his kingdom. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope you guys have a good night and God bless you.